Hey, this is Matthew, and welcome back to Nerd News Today, and it's time for one of the most anticipated figures of the year. So if you guys remember last year, Todd McFarlane did a huge Kickstarter, a record-setting Kickstarter, in fact, for what we're looking at today, which you see right in front of us. So today we're looking at the Kickstarter Spawn Classic figure. This thing is gorgeous. I remember when they debuted this at Toy Fair, the last Toy Fair to happen in New York before the pandemic hit, and this was like the talk of the town. It was beautiful then. It drew a lot of controversy as well, because it's some things we'll hit about in this video later on. But uh, yeah, it's finally in hand today. It's been shipped out to, I think, a lot of folks. Not, not quite everybody just yet, but it's getting out there to almost everybody. By the time this video hits, hopefully it will be in everybody's hands. This thing is amazing. It is a throwback to the original spawn figure from the very first wave of McFarlane toys, which I had, of course, as a kid. I remember getting that, in fact, in fifth grade. So that's how long ago that was. Many, many sad decades ago. But uh, let's just jump into this figure here, get things started. So it's loose right now, but we're gonna talk first about the packaging, which I already have some shots of from earlier. And it initially comes in this beautiful, shiny black case here, which you guys can see. It's got the spawn logo running down the front of it. Uh, it also has on the very top of it, a very nice looking matte finish spawn head logo. And you've also got a little logo on the side that says 1994 to 2021. Really cool, just very nice detail, very elegant packaging for a character who is far removed from the word elegant. Once you slide that off, you've got yourselves another packaging there, uh, which has got a little ribbon, you pull the ribbon and voila, the figure is revealed inside its clamshell packaging, which yes, is collector friendly. I'm very happy to report on that because it was something I was worried about because back in the day when those spawn toys came out, they were not collector friendly. They weren't quite thinking about them at that point. So you had to cut those guys out with scissors but nope, this time around, it's a clamshell. It just pops right out, and the figure, in theory, should hopefully fit right back in. So once you do open up that clamshell packaging, you got a few other things here that we're going to talk about. Uh, first and foremost is a comparison checklist. This is actually really handy. This is really cool. So this checklist here runs down what was different from the original toy in 1994 to what we're getting today in 2021, and there is a lot of differences. Now, keep in mind, this is the Kickstarter version, so there's a few things that were exclusive that were thrown in that were backer rewards and that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, here's just a quick look at that. You can see what is very, very different from that original toy. In addition to that, we've also got a certificate of authenticity. That's a real beauty too, printed on some very nice paper. It's got the Tom McFarlane signature, although uh, I don't think that's actually a hand-signed signature. Yeah, no, not, not hand-signed, but looks like it is. So it's a very nice copy of a hand-signed signature of Tom McFarlane. And last but not least, but probably like one of the coolest things of all is you get a comic package along with your toy, just like the original one was too. Because back in the day, you always got a Spawn comic. And it was a really smart move of Todd too, because Spawn, while it was big in the comic world, kids didn't really know much about Spawn. So for a lot of us, that was our very first Spawn comic that we owned. Uh, I can tell you, in fact, that was my first Spawn comic too. So the cover is a new version as well. This is not like the original cover. The original Spawn had uh, a different design on it, but this is again, a Tom McFarlane illustrated cover. And uh, this is not the same comic you got either because this is actually the black and whites of all the pages too. This is not full color. This is the actual original black and white pages like you would see if you got like one of those masterpiece editions that uh, I think IDW does. Uh, and there's some other companies doing it too that are showing you the actual original pages and how they look. And I personally love this stuff. I love seeing the original pages. I think they're gorgeous. You get to see so much more that you wouldn't see if it was colorized. A lot of details that you would never know about. So this is really great. Some cool, cool details across the board here. And of course, the unforgettable final page with the very first appearance of Malvogia. I think it's how you say his name. I can never say it right, but there he is. And on the back, another very cool throwback to those original toys. This was how it looked back in the day. You got to see everybody who was in that first wave and what a first wave it was too. And to this day, I still love the stupid Violator and Spawn cars. Like he never had those. He would never use those stupid things, but it was the 90s. He had to get around somehow, I guess. So let's go ahead now and take a close look at the figure itself because man, do we have a lot of things to talk about here. So we're now uptight and personal with Spawn here, something I've never ever wanted to be in my lifetime, but here he is. And uh, yeah, so I don't even know where to begin because it's just such an impressive looking figure top to bottom here. You know, we always start with likenesses, so I think that's where I got to go first. And this head is like what I've always wanted from a Spawn toy. So I remember really liking back in the day, the Spawn movie figures. I thought those are really cool designs. and They did a great job of translating the comic version to a toy. I think this is like 100 times better than that. It's like the perfect Spawn head and it looks like the modern Spawn too, as much as it does with the classic Spawn. Just great sculpting detail on that. And there's also some really great paint application in there too, because we're not just talking about solid colors. There is a little bit of weathering, a little bit of shading going on in the face too. So it adds a little bit more depth to it. Really like that. Uh, we've got great musculature and great anatomy here too. Like that's one of the things that McFarlane Toys is known for. It's always been their sense of anatomy and their proportions. And, you know, for the most part, it's it's comic booky, but it's also pretty realistic, very well done in that regard. So one of the major points that people were worried about when this toy got first announced was the articulation and how much there would be. Because, well, when they first debuted it, there wasn't really a ton visible. And uh, here we are today, and 
you know, how does it compare to like other figures? It's not like as super articulated as a WWE figure, for example, but uh, all things considered, it's got a decent amount of articulation. And, you know, McFarlane Toys, they have a reputation for not being the most articulated figures, the most movable or poseable figures. And that's a reputation that they've been working hard for the past really five years on to lose, to shake off and tell people that, yes, we now have articulation. And it's true, they have very much improved on that. They still have some ways to go, but it's gotten a heck of a lot better. It's very impressive these days. And they're kind of almost leading the pack with what they're doing. But this figure, it's got some articulation that other toys of theirs don't, but it's also missing some that they do. So the most noticeable thing off the bat that is missing is the chest piece. There's no separate buck to move the chest part around, uh, but we do have some other pieces here that are not seen on those figures, like toe joints. We have toe articulation for the first time, I think, ever in a spawn toy. Uh, is that necessary? That I don't really know about, but it's there, so that's cool. I would prefer to have the torso on top, but uh, I think they're trying to get that there to make it seamless, and that part's cool. Otherwise, I mean, articulation is what you would typically get. You've got flexible wrists. It looks like you've got the bending elbow here, which is, in fact, a single-jointed elbow. Let's double-check that. Uh, yeah, it's a single-jointed elbow. There is a bicep swivel on the toy, but it's a little hard to get to because he's got those giant gauntlets across his biceps there, so that kind of hinders it, as does the enormous cape. We'll get to that cape. Just wait a minute or two for that one. Uh, the head is ball-jointed, and that moves wonderfully because there's also a separate neck piece, too, which I didn't remember that they were doing that. So the separate neck piece, too, means you've got some really excellent articulation there. The legs, you know, the legs are tough because uh, we've already got them on the base, too. We'll talk about that in a few moments. His legs are tough to discuss because they are super duper hindered. And while they are ball jointed, they're not gonna be the easiest to move. Uh, but there is a fair amount of articulation on them. Uh, again, I gotta worry about these spikes. Those are super pointy. Those are actually way sharper than expected. So, you know, the upside about Spawn is he's never gonna be like doing any crazy poses. He's gonna always be for the most part like this. So while it's nice to have more joint movement and posability, you know, you're not gonna do much more than what we're looking at right here. While it might sound like a cop out, it is kind of true to the character. So in that case, it's not the worst. Uh, you also have these chains here, which are wonderful, but they are going to get in the way a little bit. So, uh, you know, really the coolest articulation is what you're seeing right now, this little hula thing that Spawn is doing. He's dancing for you. He's got a really great swivel waist here, and that just does some wonders. So it's going to give you some really nice posing. Uh, so, yeah, actually, since I got the base here, I will show you guys this here. He does come with a wonderful-looking Spawn base with his logo and, again, the years on it. And it also says right there on the top, it's a record-setting figure. So that's really cool. Nice little way to commemorate that hallmark occasion for them. So we got to talk about this cape here, and I need to turn this around because that's really how it is more impressive. Spawn is known for his capes, and Spawn figures have always been especially known for that too. Like, they've always gotten it right, and that's been something that McFarlane loves to do. Like, he loves giant flowing capes, and he did not skimp on the capes this time around. This is enormous, and yes, it is in fact articulated, uh, so you could actually fold it up around Spawn like this to get tighter around him. You can extend it really nicely to get a huge wingspan on him, uh, and that part is great, and it's... Very, very well balanced, too. Like, as you notice here, he's not really flopping around as I move this cape. Uh, the cape is very much independent of that weight issue. He's going to always be able to keep himself on his two feet. And no matter how you move it, he's not going to fall over. So that part is great. Cape is amazing. Capes are always great in McFarlane toys, so never can complain about those. And I also got to tell you guys, too, the texture on it. Like, that part is where it really shines. Like, it feels like something different. You know, whereas the spawn body is very smooth, as it should be, because it's just, you know, a skin-tight cat suit. The texture on the back of the cape is just phenomenal. So that part is really cool. It's gonna look really great when you take some figure photography. And speaking of photography, you're gonna need some accessory to take some good photos with that spawn. He comes with a bunch of them. So first things first, we've got an alternate head sculpt. This is the hamburger head sculpt and we're gonna swap it out right now. So there were uh, several different head sculpts I believe that came with this figure. This is the one that I got. I didn't go crazy with it. So let's go ahead and swap in that piece right there. And that came out really smooth. And we're not just talking about the head, the entire neck piece comes out there. So a little bit of wiggling and that's going to go in there and that's our hamburger head sculpt. And again, just really great. I remember one of my favorite toys of all time with Spawn actually was with that hamburger head. It's hideous, it's gross, it looks well done. And that's not a hamburger pun either. Let's talk about some of the other accessories too. We've got this giant sword here. I think this is the Necro sword is the term for it. Uh, really great detail again here. I love giant swords, can never get enough of them, and this is a really wonderful one. You know, my green screen's gonna hate me too, because we've got a lot of green accessories. We've got some necroplasm here, which fits in Spawn's hand. I think it actually is this hand here we have on him, in fact. So, let's see, I think you can just slide it through his fingers, and voila, you got some plasm. That looks really sweet. Wow, and it's translucent, so you get some really nice figure photography with that later too. If you're someone that's into taking photos, this is gonna look so great when it's lit up from behind or lit from underneath him. Uh, and speaking of plasm, we also have little dagger too that he comes with. Let's see if we can get that into this hand perhaps. 
Oh, well, his hand just popped off, which is, that's fine, because it's going to make my life easier. But yeah, that's how that hand's going to look, too. So <laughs> speaking of, since the hand's popped out, you do get three sets of hands total, and there's the other hands that are right there. You guys can see that. So a bunch of hands doing all sorts of different things. And last but not least, we have this giant weapon right here. This is like an M16 with a rocket launcher and, for some reason, a bayonet. I don't know why you'd ever have a bayonet on a gun like this. It's just such like a 90s spawn thing to do. But yeah, if, you know, if you're up that close and you don't want to grenade them, just go ahead and stab them too. That's fine. Uh, so let's pop that into his hands, show you guys how that looks. And I guess we'll do a little bit of a hand swap right here too. So that goes like that. And... That's not the best way to hold the gun, but you guys can see it does fit. Uh, you know, there's other hands that will do a better job. I'm going to have some better photos, too. You guys know that, so let's take a look at those. But, yeah, the weapons all fit, uh, as you can see in these other photos here. Nothing to complain about there. That's really kind of the main thing here is I've got nothing to complain about. I mean, I'm not necessarily, like, the biggest Spawn fan out there, but it's a really impressive figure, and, you know, you had to be part of the history setting thing, too. You had to get this toy if you were a fan of Spawn in the 90s, if you're a fan of action figures and what McFarlane has done over the years. And I think it's a really wonderful commemoration of what they've been achieving for this period of time. Like, they've really done some major things for action figures. They've set the standard for sculpts and that kind of thing when other companies were really doing still fairly primitive sculpts. So, you know, at the end of the day, really wonderful likeness, great amount of accessories, pretty good value, I'd say, for what you're getting here. So that's our look at the Spawn figure itself, but let's do some comparisons to how he looks with some other action figures. And uh, here, in fact, is another McFarlane Toys figure. This is Cyborg. So this is from their Teen Titans line as part of the DC Universe toys that they're doing. And here they are side by side. And so here's what is missing from the Spawn figure is he has a torso that actually does move on the top piece there. You can see that that part moves. He does not have the toe articulation, does he? Oh, he does, actually. So they do. Interesting. So I forgot they had the toe articulation there. Uh, which the Spawn toy does here, too. Uh, Cyborg does have double-jointed elbows, so you can get that great stanky leg right there. Um, so that's really the main thing that's missing. That's kind of the most important joint that's missing is this chest piece here. That Spawn does not have that. But otherwise, I mean, it sizes up really nicely with the DC figures. Let's bring in a few wrestling toys, because I've always got plenty of those. Here's a stunning Steve Austin from his WCW days, and here is an AEW Kenny Omega getting wrapped up inside his cape, which is kind of weird, but that's how they look, and that's how they scale up with those toys. I don't think these guys will ever be working in the ring together, but uh, hey, you know, why not? You never know. I've also got a Marvel Legends Silver Centurion Iron Man figure. You can see this spawn is definitely looking a little bit bigger than an Iron Man, looking a little bit bigger than a Marvel Legends, which that kind of surprises me because I'm trying to figure out what size he actually is. And it feels like the spawn is kind of between six and seven inches maybe. So, you know, again, comparing it to, I'll bring in the Kenny Omega, which is closer to like that weird range also. Uh, it looks like the spawn is definitely better in height with him than a Marvel Legend figure, which, go figure. I thought they'd be closer in scale with those guys. And speaking of larger scale figures, I've got now a Diamond Select John Wick figure, and I've also got a Diamond Select Thanos figure. So you can see how these guys all scale up. The John Wick looks enormous compared to that spawn. Uh, but really, I wanted to compare it mostly to the Thanos because, I mean, it's Thanos and Spawn. I mean, that's, that's like the showdown we've all wanted, <laughs> right? And uh, I think this also holds up pretty good, too, in terms of size. I think these guys hold up pretty good, too. I mean, this is quite an epic stare down, and they, they match up size-wise. So Diamond Select toys, for the most part, they're going to look pretty decent with, but, uh, you know, user mileage may vary on those. And last figure I want to show is one that's obviously nowhere near in scale. Uh, this is the Incendium Online Tarna figure from their Heavy Metal series. She is a 5-inch figure, so she is going to be dwarfed by this spawn. Uh, yeah, very easily dwarfed there. But really great figure, too. And I love the fact that, honestly, her, her outfit kind of matches Spawn's outfit, too. So that's also why I wanted to have them side-by-side. But essentially, yeah, that is our look at this Kickstarter classic Spawn figure, and that's how it looks side by side with other toys, too. You know, overall, I've got nothing but good things to say about it. Even the articulation that's not quite there, it doesn't bug me because it doesn't really fit the character. I think one thing that would have been cool to consider would be a removable cape because, you know, it does hinder a lot of his articulation. And this cape, again, it's really, really enormous. It's a gargantuan sized cape, it cuts down the articulation. Uh, and as impressive as it does look, it would have been cool to have maybe a softball cape. Uh, fabric cape with the wire would have been really, really wonderful to have. But even then, just having something that's not quite as enormous would have been cool as an option. Maybe that could have been a Kickstarter add-on. Uh, or maybe they're just going to do that down the line. They'll do something else. I mean, obviously, it's not going to be removable because this is, like, part of the mold itself. But it's something I hope that they think of down the line because I think a cloth cape in particular could look really interesting with this type of figure. So there you guys have it. That is our look at the Kickstarter exclusive classic Spawn figure. And here he is, of course, side by side with all of his minions now. Uh, so yeah, if you wanted to get one of these things for yourself, well, <laughs> good luck. You are screwed. This was, again, Kickstarter only. So if you didn't get it, you're not going to get it. You're going to have to go to eBay. And uh, in that case, good luck because those prices are sky high. They've hit the roof. And I'm not talking 
rooftops like Spawn used to hang on in top of the 90s. Uh, no, those prices are absurdly high now. So if you missed out, you're kind of missed out for good. But hopefully you stay up to date on Kickstarter and you don't miss out when Todd does this again because chances are he will do another Kickstarter of another character. Uh, maybe it's Violator, maybe it's going to be someone else entirely. Who knows? A lot of options. Uh, I'm going to be definitely keeping an eye out for those because, yeah, I don't want to miss them either. So that's our review. Hope you guys liked it. If you're new to the channel, please make sure to subscribe to us because we do all sorts of other action figure things here as well as plenty of other stuff on the channel. Of course, make sure to follow us on all of our social media pages as well. And again, normally I would plug like where to go to our affiliate pages to buy this, but as I just mentioned, you ain't buying this anywhere, my friend. So yeah, sorry about your luck. So until next time, I'm Matthew. This has been Nerd News Today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys here next time.